Welcome back. Imperfect Parenting. Here we are. Back here with Seth again. We are back. I love getting around Seth. Yeah. Always Just get to have conversations and someone records it. Yes. And actually, Ashley, <laughs> Ashley's behind the camera recording. Yeah, because we have a lot of conversations that don't get recorded. It's true. <laughs> really good. Very true. <laughs> These ones are. So be careful, Seth. Yeah. No, don't be careful. So I am going to jump on your little bandwagon here. You guys have been doing it for years. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and share one of the memes. Yeah, This is kind of like it's a big on. deal for me right here. It is. It's, You're we now should have had you do it the first time, but we had to see if we were going to keep you around. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm still here. <laughs> I came back. They let me let me stick around. So I've now been promoted to meme talker, meme giver. Is yes, there, is there a title? Meme man. This is meme, meme man. I'll be your meme man. Any day. Okay, I'm done. Here we go. That's next episode. Moving man. on. That's next month. <laughs> next month. Hold on, meme man. Oh, goodness. All right. I'm going to get fired in a minute. Uh, you you got to tell him what it looks like. Okay, so this is Rafiki, Rafiki right? Mm -hmm. Such a great character. He's deep in meditation. He's deep in meditation with He's his eyes closed. Jesus. That's, that's what we're Yes, there we go. We often describe him as the Holy Spirit in mm -hmm. The Lion King. If you didn't know Rafiki is from The Lion King, That's where, where have from. you been? Rafiki. You're missing out. And it says this, when your kids are all losing their minds at the same time, and you, you got to connect with Jesus so you don't do anything stupid. That's real. That's wise. That's it great. Is. Rafiki, thank you. <laughs> Make a little space, go talk to the Lord, and come back. Get the right influence. Kind of like last time I was here last month, we were talking about boundaries. and uh -huh. we're, We were talking about fun or room, just setting boundaries and stuff like that. Uh, but this is kind of like, oh, I, I, I'm, I'm giving myself some space, so yeah. I make mm -hmm. sure that I'm fun as well. Which yeah. that's a good boundary for parents to have as well, is to recognize when you're not doing good. I need a little bit of space and come back so I don't do something that's, dumb. That's one of the things Brittany's taught me well. You're you're pretty good at that one. And telling you you need a timeout? Well, that. <laughs> <laughs> Go somewhere Tell, else. Telling Ben you need a timeout? <laughs> me watching her oh. do it to herself. Yeah. She'll, oh. she'll give herself a timeout. Like, I'm about to be no fun. I'm going to go be back. in the no fun chair right yeah. now. I, well, I think we're going to talk about... Um, discipleship mm -hmm. and and so much for me when i look at rafiki's just you know getting his holy spirit time on because if you don't do a good job of taking care of yourself if you don't do a good job of figuring out what you need or give yourself space or recenter like okay jesus i need you to be present with me because we're going to be down a kid at the end of the day if we don't i i feel like if you don't do that you're not going to be able to lead them well. Yeah. You're going to lead them with all the things that you were trying so hard to not bring into your family culture. Um, and so that whole parenting with the Holy Spirit, which I, I'm a huge advocate for. So mm -hmm. many people don't do it. I don't know why. It, I don't know. All the time. I feel why like would all we, the time. <laughs> why would we not pull on the greatest parent of all time who's ever present in our time of need to help us parent like he parents us yes. and we ignore him and try to do it ourselves yep. rather than go, I need space. I'm going to go connect with the Lord and come back. Mm -hmm. And also the whole, what that demonstrates to them. I think a lot of discipleship is not just what we lecture our kids about oh, and yeah. what we get them to remember or memorize or quote back to us. It's how we live. Mm -hmm. It's how we go, hey, guys, I don't know what to do. I'm, I, this is Well, this you is tough. tell your kids you don't know what to do sometimes? Of course. Of course. I thought we were supposed to know Not everything. Not all the time. You know, I've done it maybe twice. So twice I've said I don't know. Just, yeah, there was just one time. Like, yeah, we there was one time, time I didn't know We've never did. parented a 17-year-old yeah. before. Well, we don't was know what we're 10, doing. Yeah. 11, 12, It's 13. been every year. Yeah. But being honest about yeah. it and going, I need to go pray. I need to go think. Or, I mean, I've been in the car. I'm just remembering a time I was in the car where like, I think stuff was going on. And I'm like... Lord Jesus, I just need help. I kept my eyes open because I was driving. Like, I need help right now. We're having trouble. We need your wisdom. But I'm showing them as well. Mm -hmm. Like, that's discipleship to me is to go, let me demonstrate for you what it looks like for me to disengage for a second, check with the Lord, and come back yeah. and interact. You see me interacting with God as I'm interacting with you or then interacting with you from that place. I think it's super huge. I mean, this was the the example Jesus gave us. You know, as you read through the Gospels, you're watching him live his life and say, come follow me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he had moments where he sat down and he talked to them and he taught them, but mm -hmm. it was all connected to a demonstration. Mm -hmm. 
Like, come, come live with me and watch what happens. Yeah, we're gonna change the world, literally. Well, how many times did he leave? He just like would go off, and the disciples were like, "Rafiki, where did yeah. he go? What where is he is doing?" He? And then he's coming back. <laughs> totally, because <laughs> he just met with the father. Like, these people are driving me crazy, or what are we doing? And yeah. you know, they don't always just talk about what it was that he was doing, but he, you know that he was with his father. He was like, "Okay, what's the assignment? The what am I doing? I'm going to the stores because I'm." I'm called to lead, which means I need to really make sure that I'm doing okay because I, I I can mess things up real fast. <laughs> you know, it's really cool. I have a bunch of thoughts around this already, but um, you know how in Luke 4, Jesus came to bring recovery of sight to the blind? Mm-hmm. Uh, that same phrase, the, the that phrase, a version of that phrase is used when Jesus is handed the five loaves and the two fish, mm. and he's got five loaves, two fish, 5,000 men plus women plus children really right. hungry, and it says Jesus looked up to heaven and gave thanks. That looked up means recovered sight. So Jesus actually, you know, he's got... He probably he, saw it go, and yeah. now what? <laughs> and now what? But he's like, I need to look at this from your perspective. I need to look up. I need to recover my sight with you, reengage with mm-hmm. you before I... You know, I'm not just looking at five loaves and two fish. I'm looking at 15,000 people probably fed with baskets and baskets, 12 baskets left over. I think that's a huge thing is like Jesus came to give us recovery of sight. And sometimes you need to look up and mm-hmm. give yourself that space to go, yeah. I need to recover my sight here because all I can see is chaos and crazy and yelling and fighting and yeah. or whatever else is happening in the house with the kids. You talk about um, a viewpoint of the train up a child and the way they should go. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about kind of your, I, I love your take just on when we, when Christians hear that, they kind of go into this panic st- space instead of a, a, a posture of being in authority and powerful. Yeah, I think one of the things I say is a lot of Christians interpret that verse to say train up a child in all the ways they shouldn't go. Mm-hmm. And so they're like, don't do this, stop doing this, uh-huh. quit doing this, yeah. knock it off, don't ever do that How again. How's that discipling? Yeah, and it's like, unfortunately, that interpretation has no promise attached because that's not what it says. It says train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they won't depart from it. So it's like, what do we, what, you know, discipleship is like, what are we here to do? Like, mm-hmm. What are we here for? Mm-hmm. Who are you? What are you here for? How do I train you up in the way you should go instead of just going... Here's all the things you're never supposed to do again, yeah. and you can't do, and you can't say that, and you can't talk yeah. like that, and you can't treat people that way. It's like, well, what? how can I treat people? What can I say? What voice, what words can I use? How powerful are they? And I, I think that's one approach. Another approach is the word train has everything to do with experience, mm-hmm. not just tell your kids all the things they should do so when they're old they won't depart. No, it's it's give them the experience yeah. of it, which is what we're talking about in in a, in a sense. Is we're guiding them, we're, we're showing them, we're 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 living it out. Yeah, the, this is all action. Yeah. It's not it's not just words. It's participation. It's engagement. It's all these things. I, I was just in a meeting recently with um, Michael Berder. Mm-hmm. If you haven't heard about he's who he is, amazing. you should look him up because he he's one of the best at really capturing this piece right here. But he was talking about how we're not. I, I I mean the piece you're both talking about, which is the Discipleship happens through walking together mm-hmm. yeah. and, and life on life. To quote Banning Leapshire, he says it all the time. Life on life. Um, it's but like it, groups it, at church. It, exactly. That's how small groups is. <laughs> life on life groups. Mm-hmm. But that's how it happens is actually doing life together. The other piece that Michael does a great job reminding us about in some meeting talking about something, but I, I think it, it fits right here with families is we're not just discipling people. We're discipling people to disciplers to become disciplers. And I, I I think even this verse you're describing, it's not what you shouldn't be doing. I'm going to build something inside of you. I mean, I look at this, the disciples. Mm-hmm. Jesus built something inside of them, and they turn around and give it away. Mm-hmm. And, and it's all about the sending. And so I want to hear stories, and I already do, but I kind of wait to hear stories about my children mm-hmm. that we have planted a seed inside of them. And yeah, through through this connection with the Holy Spirit we have, mm-hmm. through teaching them that they go out, and what they're giving away is what they're famous for. The, the, the things that they're living out and inviting people into is way more powerful than how, how big their title is, how, how much money they have. It's 
that we actually get to lead people in, in, in the direction that changes lives. Yeah. I think a lot of, um, if you were to look at the, a, a simple way to gauge if you're discipling well, other than I'm just putting my life on display in ways that I want you to replicate, it's also asking good questions. Yeah. Um, I think the, the lecture space or the command or the directions, if you will, minimize the impact compared to asking questions. Mm -hmm. Because these questions are, you're, you're there to help answer them, but you want them to go explore to find the answer. So it's that, that place of practice activation, you know, kind of exploring. Like if you think about, um, I think about when I've, taught my kids, my girls to bake cookies, mm -hmm. I could tell them the directions and they, I could model it, me doing it, but until I give them a space for them to explore it and see how much of what they've watched happens when they put it into practice, it's they're probably going to fail miserably. Like I've seen them make cookies in the early years versus now. Yeah. Now they make cookies without me even present. I'll come mm -hmm. home and they've made cookies. cookies waiting for but you. But when we first started this, you know, I would, they've seen me do it a million times and even participated in some degree of it. But until I actually kind of ask different questions like, oh, so what happens when you put the butter in cold? Oh, what happens when you don't crack the egg into a different container first? You know, we have farm fresh eggs, so every now and then there's a little extra extra on that egg that you don't want in the cookie. But so there's just what happens? What do you think you could do differently? Like there's just a different way of partnering and inviting them into learning rather than just that command. Yeah. I think you see that with Jesus. One of the areas I I just noticed how many times he asked questions. Yep. Not just to the disciples, to the Pharisees, to the people who are around, like, you know, the one point where he heals somebody on the Sabbath and Don't and the Pharisees what? are all mad and he goes, in essence, he goes, can I ask you a question? And he says, how many of you, if your sheep fell into a pit on the Sabbath, would pull it out? And all of them, no one's answering, right. but they're all going, dang it, yes, I would. <laughs> and then he goes, well, how much more valuable are people than sheep? Right, so he's discipling everyone around him, and he's correcting the mindsets mm -hmm. and beliefs of the religious leaders. He is correcting them so hard by just asking questions, and they're going, so good. "Yeah, we would pull them out." Wow, people are more valuable than sheep. Wow, okay. Yeah. And all he did was go, "Got a couple questions for you." Questions, and then kind of an example that. It's not a command. It's it's really just an invitation for you to think a little bit harder, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, that's and and it takes more time. It does it take takes more, more time. time. It takes more practice on the parents' part too. Is I have to practice asking questions. Mm -hmm. Be patient. Be, so I often tell people just look for any opportunity to ask questions. Yeah. So you start catching yourself now thinking in questions. This is what yeah. I do. Yeah. I'm changing the way I think. So I, I'm now thinking about questions where before I'm just thinking about commands and get it done and do it because I said so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just that, heard. It's so much harder. <laughs> People are like, I just want easy. Like, mm -hmm. well, then you shouldn't have kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> easy and kids don't go together at no, all. Not one bit. But the best adventure ever, that's up there. Best adventure. Hey, it's Brittany here. I'm normally on the Kylo show, yes, but I wrote a book. I wrote a book for parents, but I talk a lot about moms. So if you're listening to this and you're a mom who's frustrated, who feels like you're failing, who feels hopeless in this game of parenting that we're in, I want to invite you to read my book. It comes out Mother's Day this year, and I picked that day on purpose. Because I know that church is attended the most on Mother's Day. And I've met with so many moms out there that want to do this well. And so do I, which is why I wrote this book. I know that connection is the goal and perfection just gets in the way. So if that's you, mom, buy yourself this gift on Mother's Day. It's going to be worth it. So I hope that you feel blessed and encouraged by my new book, Imperfect Parenting. You can find it at imperfectparenting.co. I had a, I got a story with this recently. I was noticing my kids were adjusting who they are 
based on who they're around. Sure. So, and I go, and I was like, oh, wow, they're really changing. So I thought, I was driving in the truck. I'm like, I actually do that too. And here's how I'm, this is, this is really powerful for me. I've been practicing it more and more ever since. I kind of accidentally stumbled into it, which I happen to do often, but I stumbled into this. I said, I was like, what if I asked them for advice with me? So I said, hey guys, so I get around my friend, Jared, Mm -hmm. our friend, Jared, that we all know. And I'm like, I become, I become really quick witted. And very sharp. Does your accent funny. change? No, my accent. <laughs> I don't kind of go southern. You don't get a southern, southern draw. Southern, southern no. accent. All right. And I say this, and I'm like, I when I get around Jared's, I it's like I change into a different person. Mm. And I said, and they go, Dad, you do that with Marshall too, because Marshall, my other friend, who's also very similar, similar to Jared, I'm like, wow, they pull something out of me that, and I'm different than when I'm just by myself or with my family, like something. And then I said, but I get around other friends, and they, and I was explaining to them, these other friends that they know and go, when I get around them, I also change. Like I'll eat different food Mm -hmm. that I don't normally eat based on that. And I said, you know, I said, some of that's healthy and some of that's not, Mm -hmm. you know, if I'm violating my conscience or your covenants or my covenants Mm -hmm. to adjust who I am. So I'm not necessarily saying all that, but I'm asking them and I go, "How, how do I know if when I change around certain friends, how do I know if it's healthy or not? And they're going, well, dad, if they're, you know, they're saying stuff like this, well, dad, if they want you to like do bad things, do bad things yeah. that you don't normally do and you do them, like then that's bad. And I said, well, what if it's treating people a certain way? What if they talk about people in a certain way? And then I start doing that too. Is that good or bad? Did I change for the good? Or they're like, dad, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't adjust who you are and talk like that. And so I'm asking them, I'm telling them a scenario. And then I go, what about you guys? How do you know when you're around friends and you kind of adjust? Do you guys do that too? And they're like, yeah, we do that too. I'm like, well, how do you mm-hmm. know? How do you know if it's healthy? And we had this powerful conversation that cards yeah, all awesome. questions. I'm asking them for input on my life and then aim it back towards their life and it was this powerful discipleship moment where i'm going whoa my kids know more than i think they do they can recognize that stuff they can they can see it they can speak into it and then i can turn it quickly easily lovingly and they go yeah you know if my friends are talking bad i shouldn't change and par- and go in with them and i'm like have you ever done that and i yeah, and like just bringing that in. So it was like to me, it was like this powerful example of asking them questions and asking them questions to give me advice, mm-hmm. and then turning it back to them was so strong for me. You know, um, one of the things that it's fun is when you're you disciple your kids in ways that you didn't realize you have been, mm-hmm. but it, it produces the best fruit. You mm-hmm. know, you're just it's part of who we are and what we value and how that shows up and. Um, we had a, a situation where there was a group text thread mm-hmm. and, um, you know, started not getting so nice and started getting mean and disrespectful and then this and that and this and that. And at one, you know, and Addie's showing me everything that's going on. A middle school group yeah. text thread. Yeah. yeah. Girls. Wow, these, I bet these, that could go these girls, sideways. I would say, normally are sending videos of worship sessions that they were at, scriptures. I mean, they're amazing. Mm-hmm. They are 99% they are. of the time amazing. Um, and so what happened was all of a sudden somebody got their feelings hurt, and so this little catty thing starts happening, and it got really messy really fast. Adeline was telling me the whole time, like, what, what do I say? What do I say? I said, I wouldn't say anything. I would just not. I would just not. Then it got real nasty. And um, she goes, I don't even want to be part of this group anymore. I said, yeah, it's a bummer, huh? I said, well, what do you want to do? She goes, I just, I made this group so we would encourage each other and love on each other and champion each other in the Lord. And that's none of what's going on. I said, okay. And so we started talking about what scripture says about if you're offended by a brother, go to them, not to ever, you know. And so we're talking about that scripture. We're talking about, you know, what is it we're about to be as people and and believers and different things like that. And so she's, you know, we're just having conversation, asking questions and dialoguing and she's like well what do i say i said well what do you what do you need to communicate i said how do you're a leader great question because i know that you're probably not the only one that's feeling this way mm-hmm. and the hardest part is saying something because you're not sure if you're going to be punished you're going to be welcomed i said but what do you need 
She goes, I don't want to be a part of this if we're going to continue this. I said, okay. Well, I would communicate that if I were you. So she writes up this thing and says, hey, I love you girls. I know that there's some stuff going on. Bible says this, you know, go to your friend, your neighbor, your brother. And I, I don't want this to be a place of drama. I made this so that we could all encourage each other. And I know you're capable of it. But if this is going to continue, I'm no longer going to be a part of it. Yeah, you're welcome to do what you're going to do, but I just won't partake. This is what wow. I'll be doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which I loved. So she puts that out there. Come on. How old is she? She's 13. Sounds like a 40 some year old. <laughs> <laughs> Laying it out in a healthy way. Wow. I didn't have it at 13. She's an adult. No, no, definitely not. And what happened was another girl in the, in the group said, I agree with Addie. I don't want any drama. I love you girls. Um, another girl, two other girls actually, side texts Adeline and says, thank you for being brave enough to say that. I didn't know how to do that. Wow. And another girl said, thank you so much. I, I love your heart. And and then some of the, the drama that was going on, they stopped it. They've moved it somewhere mm -hmm. else. They immediately realized, oh, I this is not what this is for. But what I, I think about is her willingness to let me guide her Mm -hmm. because she trusts that I'm she going to... She was a to... disciple to you. Yeah. And then she's discipling them. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what Ben's talking about, that Mike was saying. It's just this powerful thing. Like, I didn't say, okay, there's going to be girl junior high drama, <laughs> and this is what you're going to do, and da, da, da. We just have high value for our friendships and what we bring to them and the standard and, you know, how they influence it or not. And, um, you know, it's just amazing, again, to see the fruit that's produced. And, you know, Addie's encountered bullies and different things like that. And her courage to communicate, I think, has been produced because of her really a safe place to practice how to communicate, yeah. which means I can give you feedback, Mom, mm -hmm. which she has. That's mm -hmm. a fun story that's in my book. She can give Dad feedback. She can give us. I mean, I don't know how many times she's told us, okay, you two. Yeah. It's usually I'm the one that being spicy. But no, uh -huh. no, no, never ever. Ben, you're hey, the hey, spicy hey, one. It's okay, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know that yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, know that four yet. seasons, <laughs> I haven't figured yeah. that out. Down Everyone down. knows that. <laughs> but you know, we're the, disconnected. We're disconnected, and or it. or we're bickering over something, or giving attention to something that doesn't have any value. Yeah. And and you know, our kids, all of them, will call us out. I think Addie's probably the, the loudest and quickest, but it's. We are practicing discipleship yeah. in our home in all aspects. Which the thing I keep thinking about as you're describing this is it's that that needs to be the pinnacle of discipleship as parents, is we are the ones discipling our kids. Because mm -hmm. we often, and you know, Seth could talk about this for about five episodes, <laughs> um, we often relegate that to the church or to the school or to something or yes. someone else. However, I also believe there is there is places for other influences Absolutely. that we trust and love. Like I'm sitting there across from Seth thinking, my girl, who hasn't been in your children's ministry, because you haven't had one in mm -hmm. years. Yeah. Since she was eight. I had her as a little kid. No, I had her since she was Delaney. I yeah. know, but I that's the last younger, time you had her. Then. Yeah, oh, was eight. Yeah, it's yeah. been, it's been 10 left. years almost. Yeah. And she still looks at you and, and describes you as her pastor. Yeah, and she would invite, she would welcome any input yeah. I have yes. in her life Absolutely. anytime. And I... I love it. And so I, like, I mean, a quick little thing is Seth baptized her. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, when she was six... I think so. I think she was, was six. Uh, six, seven, somewhere in there. She was yeah. like adamant. She's like, I want to get baptized. Yeah, she said, no, not Papa, not I, Daddy, nope. Seth. Well, I wanted to do it, but she chose you, Yeah, <laughs> which I loved. Yeah. But it just illustrates the point again. I think, you know, the, the phrase we all always hear, it takes a village. Yes. To raise a child. I'm not her only influence no. from church. You guys are, I'm reinforcing exactly. what you guys are there doing you go. at home. I'm I'm strengthening what you guys are doing yeah. at home, not replacing what you should be doing mm -hmm. at home. I mean, uh, you know, you can't see her, but Ashley's singing in this room as well. She's another one for Delaney, just using Delaney as the example. She's our oldest, mm -hmm. our practice child. Well, I would say that, you know, Ashley, it's kind of funny because uh, the, our three kiddos kind of have gravitated towards certain ones more than the others. but Certain people on staff at Loving on yeah. Purpose yeah. who are really close to the family, they gravitate towards different yeah. ones. And it, I, I think Ashley is wired more similar to Delaney, and so she's been able to speak truth to the things that Ashley's navigated through as her own lives that come up with 
given the personality and makeup. So valuable as a parent. And I'm like, oh, okay, this is why we love youth pastors, youth leaders. Mm-hmm. We love youth you pastors. Know, we love you. We youth, do. Youth, children's pastors. All of that. So valuable. They're crucial. Um, if you're a parent, you need to tell your children's pastor and youth pastor that they need to hear. <laughs> Absolutely. They do Sorry, need to hear. Had to say we that. have a children's pastor and youth pastor. Probably right here. Cr- they'll probably cry <laughs> yeah. on your shoulder. I haven't heard most, that. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, sorry. No, I, I, I'm just saying that the, those are the, the places that are, are resources and additions. They should not be what you're relying on. Right. Because mm-hmm. if you're relying on that, you're missing the. At, at maximizing the opportunity of what you actually want to see produced in your kids. Yeah. So one of my questions right here for, I mean, for all of this, but for, for, for you two, is if someone's listening and they would say, where do you start? You know, if I don't feel like I've really been discipling on purpose or I'm not even sure what that means in my home, yeah. what's a great place to start? How do I start discipling on purpose? Well, I would ask yourself, are you being discipled? Mm. Because if you aren't being discipled by leaders... That's a great answer, honey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, <laughs> I was thinking from the first episodes that we did to now, I'm like, well, I think I've grown up some. But I, I think it's really a, a reflection on That's do good. I know what it means to be discipled? Because if I haven't welcomed that space in, yeah. then I'm not going to be able to replicate it. That's yeah. my first thought. Yeah. And practically, it's like one thing I like to say is like, hey, if you want your kids to learn how to pray... Pray with them. Mm-hmm. Pray in front of them. Good. You have Let some really hear. great, simple. You should tell them about the things that you have for prayer stuff, real fast. That's a oh, great like resource. like the prayer cards. Yeah, yeah well, I have these little prayer cards we made. They're 30, 30 prayer cards. We have them for kids. We have them for parents, and we have them for grandparents. We have sixty for kids, two sets, and it comes with a little wooden stand. You set them in there. You, you know, and you pray a prayer, flip it around, and stick it in again. But they're all based on scripture and stuff. So it's a great way. Like, we do it all the time. I mean, it's a great way to start and just sustain of like, hey, we're making declarations. The the cards are, one's a declaration, one's a request, and one's like a promise from Mm. God, like where God says something over them. So it's like, you know, on our parent one, before I left the house the other day, it was like, we are receiving, our family's receiving God's joy today or Mm. something like that. Like, yeah, our family receives God's joy today. And so it's just a good way to like pray with your kids, let your kids pray. They can look at their card and read yeah. it and say a quick little prayer. You know, I like to read the Bible and talk talk, talk about briefly it. about mm-hmm. it. I don't make it super long. I don't make it super huge. I'm like, you know, one rule we had in children's ministry was like one minute for every year old they are is mm-hmm. is a good Thing. So if you got a two year old, <laughs> yeah, if you got a two year old and they make it two minutes while you're talking about something in the kingdom or a scripture, or that's the great. Bible that you're reading, yeah, don't expect a half an hour devotion from your two year old kid. <laughs> otherwise, your otherwise, otherwise you're going to be disappointed and quit. Yeah. You're going to give up and go, I can't disciple my kids. I can't minister to my kids. No, no, you just tried to. You had an expectation that wasn't healthy, and so, so you know, my twelve year old, we can go longer when it comes to reading the Bible or talking about something or. Mm-hmm. Than, than my six-year-old. Yeah. I love um, Dave Hill has um, Heart Smart, mm-hmm. and it's also another resource of just kind of uh, – we had him on the Kylo show, and he talked about – He's so great. He's super fun. Uh, he talked about kind of letting the stories come alive yeah. and even activating – acting them out. I know that you and I have mm-hmm. both done that with our families, uh, and that's a really young age because that's a fun way to make them David and Goliath. Yeah. You know, and Noah and build build the boat and bring all the animals yeah. in. We would forget sometimes as little kids and they'd say, "Can we act it out?" Yeah, and go and for it. It's just these little opportunities. But or now with phones, like film it. Yeah, <laughs> or they. I mean, they have interactive Bibles. They have all sorts of things now that they did not have when yeah. we, we were first having kids. Yeah. So, but we do have a question, and we're running out of time, so we yeah. got to. I was answer. just reading it, so let me throw it out to you real quick in in kind of a debriefed format. But it's essentially this. Um, Listening, your child listening or not listening. That's mm-hmm. that's a depth of question. We currently have reflection time together when the child isn't listening. And then if it continues, we remove toys. But is that punishment? Here's the rest of it real quick. I'll go get the rest out and you can answer it. We also try to practice listening with some small fun listening tasks at the start of the day. But get confused with punishment and consequences, especially with not listening. Would love to hear your thoughts. So 
They said not listening four times. It's obviously a button. <laughs> it's hard. We, we get it. Sure. You give some kind of instruction and it's falling to the wayside. Yeah. I think it's hard for me if you're asking your child to, let's say this kid is four. Sounds like a good age of not listening. Mm -hmm. um, I ask you to get your shoes on. You don't get your shoes on. I ask you to get your shoes on. You didn't get your shoes on. I, we now leave to leave and your shoes are still not on. So I'm going to take away your toy for you not getting your shoes on. I don't know that that's probably the best place to insert a consequence because I do think that it probably feels like punishment at mm -hmm. that point. Um, so I would change the, hey, uh, buddy, we're going to the store and you asked me for a treat earlier and I would love to give you a treat at the store if you got your shoes on. Mm -hmm. But we're going to leave. You can bring your shoes or leave your shoes. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. But just so you know, no treats happen unless shoes are on. I love you. Yeah. Discipleship. Discipleship. Or, hey, we're going to go to the car and go to the store. Do you want to put your shoes on or carry them? Mm -hmm. yep. Like I'm not giving you a choice about whether you bring your shoes or not. I'm giving you a choice of how you bring your shoes. Yeah. And Which that, that example right there kind of plays on the – uh, this child needs to feel powerful. Yeah. And if they're not really given a choice, mm -hmm. they start feeling powerless and are looking for any place to get it back, which might yes. be, I'm going to stop listening to Scrambling you. Watch this. For a little <laughs> bit of power in their life. All the time, yeah. And if it is a toy, like if they're not putting their toys away, um, I think it's a, hey, do you want to clean up your toy room or do you want me to? If I clean up the toy room, I'm going to throw away all the broken toys, just so you know. Mm -hmm. Another powerful opportunity. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you can do it or I can do it. But yeah. I, I think you just got to make sure that the consequences are consequences and not um, some random punishment to provoke fear of withholding something. Yeah. Well, yeah, like with the taking away toys, removing toys. Yes, that could be punishment. Yes, that could not be punishment. Like it could be used yeah. based on how it's used, based on what's going on in your heart, based on the scenario taking place. Mm -hmm. Could be or not. Yeah. I, I think the biggest thing is to look at um, what are you trying to communicate? Are you trying to get compliance, obedience, yeah. partnership? Cooperation. Yeah, what is it that is, is, is fueling the motivation for the taking of the toy? Because that will reflect probably what's going on in your heart. Yeah. So. Which, which this all just brings you back to everything we talked about today, which is the this really is discipleship. Mm -hmm. There's something happening inside when I get good choices, powerful opportunities, that child is growing in the direction Asking that we want them to go. Yeah. Yep. Love it. It's great. Awesome. Yeah. Well, another wonderful podcast with mm -hmm. Seth Dahl visiting us here. Seth yep. Dahl. I'll be and, back in a month. Uh -huh. So in Perfect Parenting, we are fighting for that connection over perfection and learning to disciple our kids well. Come on. Yeah. All right. We'll see you next so time. So good. <laughs>